Okay, so tonight we're looking at Hebrews chapter 12. Last week we did a large section of scripture dealing with discipline, chastening of the Lord. And tonight just a couple of verses. That's 12 and 13. So, uh, Paul, would you read those for us, mm -hmm. please? Wherefore lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Okay. Mm. Notice the slight increase of volume <laughs> as somebody sneezed. Yeah. Thank you for that uh, <laughs> special <It's>... moment. <laughs> okay. So, um, Okay, so 12 and 13, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees. Um, what does that conjure up in your mind? Well, maybe you felt like that before. It's kind of um, a feeling of despair, of maybe depression, a feeling of giving up, that there's no hope. We're going to look at that. In a, in a bit <clears throat> but did you notice it starts out with the word wherefore wherefore um, which according to the dictionary means for which reason for which reason okay it doesn't mean where because sometimes that's a confusion that is is made um, I'm thinking now of Romeo and Juliet mm. do you know the the scene Wherefore art thou Romeo? People misunderstand that as where are you Romeo? It doesn't mean that. It means for what reason Romeo? For what reason? For what reason are you a member of the Montagues, if I recall? <coughs> and she was a Capulet and they were at war with each other, weren't they those two families? So why do you have to be, in other words, a Montague? Because um, it makes it difficult for us to have uh, this relationship. Okay, so wherefore doesn't mean where, it means for this reason, or for what reason, or for which reason, and it's there in verse 12 to say what we've just said, for that reason, okay, you need to lift up your hands which hang down, you need to, you know, straighten those knees, you need to brace up you need to strengthen your listless hands, as one translation says, and listless knees. Now, that is not promoting, by the way, the uh, do-it-yourself, pull-yourself-up-by-your-own-bootstraps uh, approach. Not at all. Funny enough, I did a little bit of research on that expression, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. Did you know, did you know, that... Um, Back in the day, when it, when it was first conjured up, however it came about, the provenance, I'm not sure, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps meant that the task that you were trying to undertake was impossible. Because, if, I don't know whether you've got them on your, on your boots, but the bootstrap is usually around about there, okay? It hangs out, doesn't it? You, you pull it so that you can put your, maybe your boot on or your shoe on. Have you tried pulling yourself up? By those it's impossible okay now over time it evolved into the opposite of what it originally meant okay but actually it's helpful as we just recall that that expression you can't do it yourself you can't pull it up by your own bootstraps because if you try that form of Christianity it will not work mm. okay as the metaphor originally intended it doesn't work that's why he says, wherefore, he's given reasons as to what it is that we need to do in order that we do go on and that we uh, persevere and we endure, uh, in this case, uh, suffering. He's alluding to Isaiah 35, verses 3 and 4. So let's look at that together. Strengthen 
ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. And here's a nice expression, he will come and save you. He will come and save you. Okay. Um, the backdrop to this, of course, is the captivity of the Israelites in Babylon. Remember, Babylon, as J Jerusalem had been sacked and they'd been taken off the Jews to Babylon and there they were in captivity. So they were feeling hopeless, they were despairing. They'd lost the homeland and the temple. What would happen? Well, it was getting to the stage where they'd given up hope almost, you see. And along, uh, this, this, the, the Lord is promising along the way, look, strengthen up, brace up, because, you know, your deliverance is nigh, it's coming, okay. Now we've got the benefit, haven't we, of knowing the outcome here, which is uh, some years later, uh, Cyrus, the Persian, um, um, took Babylon in a miraculous way and uh, not long thereafter uh, the Jews were allowed to return weren't they, to their homeland and the temple was rebuilt. <clears throat> now they didn't know that as he says strengthen the weak hands, uh, confirm the feeble knees. Um, it's just really a reminder uh, that you know God's in control and that he has it sorted, that he will come and save you. Now, I want to think about that for a moment because if you are suffering, and this is the context in which we speak, um, knowing that God will come and save you, okay, is something that maybe you already believe. Maybe you already know in your heart that God <coughs> is coming. It's called the second coming of Jesus Christ. And as Revelation 21, 3 and 4 says, there'll be no mourning, no pain, no death. The former things, the old things have gone. Yes, new things have come. But is that enough? You might say. Because right now, in the nitty gritty, in the present, okay, whilst I can see a far off that there is an end to this, I am still suffering. And indeed, some people, and I don't know of anybody here who is quite in that, um, in that situation, some people are suffering with chronic, ongoing, debilitating, horrendous sicknesses. I was watching today about, is it Joni Taylor? You come across her? Oh yeah, yeah. Wheelchair, quadriplegic, 15 years of excruciating pain. And on top of that, she had cancer for five years. Took five years of ongoing treatment. Absolutely horrendous situation to be in. Okay. And yet you can watch her and she's full of joy. Not that she didn't have her moments of deep depression. Of course she did. But uh, she seems to have got through it. And is still going through it. Um incredible to see her testimony uh, to watch her maybe if, if you want to YouTube her um, or, or like uh, Times is it um, New York Times Square Church um, places like that she, she goes around and um, you know t tells people about what she's gone through um, and by the way she's been a quadriplegic um, since very young she happened to dive into a pool I think it was that's the one, yes. Yeah, exactly. And she was after that swimming accident, wasn't it, that she, she became quadriplegic. Okay. Right. So, um, in the midst of that then, whilst we know that afar off there's hope and there is an end, what can we do? Well, go back to Hebrews chapter... Uh, 12 and 
you go on to the next verse, it says, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Make straight paths <coughs> for your feet. So your path is the way that you are walking, is right in front of you. Not just the, the far off, but the here and now, the present, the one foot foot in front of the other. And it says here that you need to make straight paths. Now, interestingly enough, if you go back to Isaiah, chapter 35, we're told that he'll come and save you, so that's the hope of the future. But look at verse 8 as well. And an highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the way faring men though fools shall not err therein the highway or the way of holiness mm. okay what is the straight path what is the way let me finish it off the truth and the life or rather who is mm. the way the truth and the life how is it that our bumpy road can be smoothed out and that we can find a way through it we find a way through it because we are in the way in Jesus Christ and that is what Joni, I'm sure, um, subscribes to, and if you look at her testimony, you'll see it is that moment by moment, not just week by week, but moment by moment, reliance upon the Lord and seeing your life as being in Him at all times. That is the way to advance, as one commentary says, commentary says with straight course upon the Christian path of life. Another verse just like that in, uh, in Isaiah, like the one in Isaiah, it's Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 26, because that is the, um, there it is, yes. No, Proverbs 4, verse 26. Because that is the way to keep going. Uh, verse 26 of chapter 4. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. We read on. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Okay, so there it is again, you see. Ponder the path of thy feet. And I suppose that's, uh, although to some is, um, is uh, how would I put it? To some who don't know it, that is, who don't or haven't experienced it, um, it's... How would I, I'm trying to think of the expression. Um, empty. It's it's just words. But to those who've lived by it, who live in it, who know it experientially, it is the truth of the matter. It is what sees you through suffering. Whatever suffering you're in. Now that's not to say that some suffering, imagine if you broke your leg, all right? You don't go ahead and think to yourself, well, I'll just put up with it. Now, of course, you seek some level of treatment. But at the same time, we must always consider suffering in the light of God's purposes for us, in the light of God's will for us. You know, Wesley talks about two things. He talks about self-denial, okay, as being something that shapes us. But he says that's a privation of something. And that privation may not feel so bad. He says, if you want to go higher, if you go on, 
Try suffering. Try, as he calls it, the way of the cross. Bearing the cross, which is enduring pain, isn't it? Pain. And it seems that that is the way that God <coughs> wakes us up to our real <coughs> selves. Okay. In the midst of suffering. And teaches us that we need to change. That we need to be humble. That we need to be um, forgiving. We need to be merciful. We need to be uh, kind. <coughs> it's in the crucible of suffering that you really discover who you are. And the dross that you need to get rid of. If you're to experience more of God. C.S. Lewis says, relying on God has to begin all over again every day. It's an everyday thing. Mm. Now, sometimes the suffering will, will, you know, alleviate and we'll feel better. And that's not a bad thing. God sends us through different seasons. But we must always consider the spiritual nature of suffering as to its power, if we allow it, yeah, to change us into more and more like Christ, Christ Jesus. Has. <coughs> Otherwise, we might choose, as it says in, in, the, in the verse, to not make those straight paths and go off. Did you notice that? As we read on, and we certainly read it in verse uh, 27 of Proverbs 4, not, in, not turning to the right nor to the left. Okay, because that's veering off the path that God wants to take us. So two things to bear in mind then. Um, and I just wanted to conclude on these before we consider that, well, is this what I'm left with? Just pain and suffering and I've just got to deal with it. Well, just to temper that, Psalm 40 verse two, um, Let's go one and two, the context. I waited patiently for the Lord. So through it, you go by the way, that is Jesus Christ. You wait patiently, okay? You allow it to do its work. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Verse two, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. So there's a time of release as well. So let's not say that, you know, you're going to be stuck with a chronic issue. Um, there can be times of healing, absolutely, and we can pray for that. As did the psalmist here, it was David. Uh, he waited on the Lord and the Lord answered. But also remember that if you are going through it, Psalm 119 and verse 117. Hold thou me up and I shall be safe. And I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. So you go on, okay? You continue to obey. You continue to abide by those statutes because they're good for you. But God, in the midst of your tribulation, is holding you up if you allow him. And he will make you safe, it says. I shall be safe. So... I suppose in conclusion, 
Just remember that, as we've read earlier in the chapter, we're never going to quite face what Jesus faced. But when we do face it, when we are suffering, you know, God loves you very much. And he's doing it because you're a son or a daughter. And he wants to change you so that you become like Jesus Christ, his one and only son. And secondly, throughout it all, it is possible to endure. He does provide the way of escape. It's interesting that in that verse where it talks about no temptation has taken you beyond you know, what is common to man, the word for temptation can also mean trial. You see? So you can see it both ways, both the temptation and the trial. God provides the way of escape. And that way is Jesus Christ. Just finish that.